Ave Maria Radio and Renewal Ministries presents Fire on the Earth, a compelling look at the new evangelization through inspiring teachings, interviews, and testimonies. Welcome, friends. This is Peter Herbeck, your host. We're beginning another week of Fire on the Earth, a program dedicated to the promotion of Catholic mission and evangelization. We've been making our way through the Acts of the Apostles over the last few weeks, celebrating the resurrection of our Lord Jesus Christ, because the church leads us into following the apostles, you know, with some of the daily readings we're receiving is as a church making our way through the Acts. And it's such an inspiring time of the year, not only recognizing the reality of the gift of uh, the resurrection, but to see the mission of the church unfolding. Because, of course, Acts begins with essentially the day of Pentecost, chapter 2, or Jesus' ascension first, and Jesus saying that he's going to you know, pour out his Holy Spirit, you shall receive power when the Holy Spirit comes upon you. And chapter 2 is the day of Pentecost, and then the mission begins for the apostles who were waiting as Jesus commanded them to. And you can see some fundamental things. You see here the essence or the essentials, what's at the heart of what it means to be a Christian, and what's at the heart of the church. Jesus had told the apostles in Luke's account, resurrection appearance to the apostles, you know, he reminded them and said he, he opened up the scriptures to them. And he showed them from throughout the Old Testament the anticipation of the coming of the Messiah. And Jesus points out that the Messiah must suffer. Now, apparently, quite a few people missed that part. You know, Isaiah 53, and as Christians and Catholics and others who maybe are familiar with those passages after years and years of celebrating Lent and Easter, Jesus underlined it in speaking to the apostles and made it clear and said, this is part of the whole plan right from the beginning. The uh, crucifixion was not plan B. Something didn't go wrong. Jesus actually came to die. He came to become a sacrifice for sin. And he said, and you saw, he said, the Messiah must suffer and die, be crucified. He said, and your witnesses to this and rise again. He said, so the Lord is sending them now, the apostles, the foundation stones of the church to go forward as witnesses. It's fundamental to what it means to be a Christian, to be a witness. In their case, they, all but one, went all the way in terms of being a martyr. You know, that's another word for witness. Witness is another word for martyr. So they they went forward to proclaim what they themselves saw, touched, experienced, and heard. And then Jesus said, now, you'll go and you'll bring forgiveness of sins and baptism essentially to the whole world. But he said, you should wait, you shall receive power when the Holy Spirit comes upon you, and you shall be my witnesses. You'll be clothed with power, is what he said in Luke's gospel in particular. And so Jesus connected, they are the witnesses, the foundation stones. They're meant to go and proclaim and bring the offer of forgiveness of sins to the world. That possibility came about by virtue of Jesus's sacrifice on the cross and that the gift of the Holy Spirit will be given to those who are baptized, and that the apostles will go forward in the power of the Holy Spirit. And so the church, from its birth, is a miracle born. It's an organism, a living organism, born of the Spirit of God, poured out on the day of Pentecost. And not only is is it her life, but it's also the core and power, the engine of the mission of the church. Because as the Catholic Church teaches so clearly, The Holy Spirit is the first agent of the church's mission. And so to be Christian means to be christened, filled with the Spirit, baptized, born again, and having been given the power to become children of God. And so, as St. Paul would say, you you know, to be a Christian, to walk by the Spirit, to live under the anointing and the direction, the encouragement, the inspiration, the counsel, the empowerment, the conviction, the grace for holiness that all comes to us through the presence and power of the Holy Spirit who dwells in us. And so we see the apostles, as they go forward and begin to proclaim the gospel in the temple, they're brought in front of the religious leaders just like Jesus. They're saying the same message other than the important addition. Uh, Jesus said the kingdom of God was at hand to repent. He convicted them. He worked signs and wonders. And he told the, uh, the religious leaders, said, if you don't believe my words, at least believe the signs the signs and the wonders that are performed. Let them be a word and a testimony because 
Peter would say later in preaching on the day of Pentecost that those signs testify, they were God the Father testifying to Jesus that he indeed was his beloved son. He was the savior of the world. And so the apostles go forward. We ended last week, uh, I think right around chapter four, where the apostles were brought, brought back, brought in front of the council of the elders. They were annoyed that the apostles were preaching, proclaiming Jesus and the resurrection of the dead as a possibility that, in fact, Jesus had risen from the dead. And then Peter stands before them and he proclaims the gospel to them. For example, here's a little summary in chapter 4, verse 8. Verse, yeah, verse 8, it says, Then Peter, filled with the Holy Spirit, said to them, rulers of the people and elders, if we're being examined today concerning a good deed done to a cripple, because remember Peter, Peter encountered the crippled man at the gate beautiful and said, in the name of Jesus, rise and walk. He said, silver and gold I don't have to give you, but what I do have, Peter knew what he had. He knew he had the dynamic power of the Holy Spirit, which is really the presence and the authority of the kingdom of God, which means the reign and the rule of Jesus. And the Lord is with me. He said, but what I have, I give you in the name of Jesus, rise and walk. This is why this man is healed, he said, but be it known to you all and to all the people of Israel that by the name of Jesus Christ of Nazareth, whom you crucified, whom God raised from the dead, by him this man is standing before you well. As Peter had proclaimed in the temple to those who first saw the miracle, and people thought, who are these guys? And Peter essentially said, it's not about us. I didn't on my own power. It's not because of my piety that this man walks. This man walks because Jesus Christ is Lord, because Jesus Christ is at the right hand of the Father, that he rose from the dead. And it's by his name that he was raised. And then goes on to say, and there's salvation in no one else, Peter said. So that's what we focused on the last couple of days of last week. If you didn't have a chance to listen to the programs, I encourage you to go to our website at renewalministries.net. You can access it all there and download our app. Our Renewal Ministries app allows you to listen to all our radio, television, YouTube, whatever we produced, you can listen to uh, at your convenience. So Peter makes that powerful, powerful declaration that there's salvation in no one else. For there is no other name under heaven given among men by which we must be saved. Who is he talking to? First of all, who's Peter? Peter's a Jewish man in Israel. Who's he talking to? In this case now, he's not only talking to the Jewish men who had gathered in the temple, but now he's in front of the council, the religious leaders of Israel. And he's telling them that there's no salvation outside of the person of Jesus Christ. He's the only Savior of the world. And the gospel, that is the good news about Jesus as Savior, having died and risen from the dead, this good news about Jesus must go first to the Jewish people because he's the Jewish Messiah. And that presupposes that the Jewish people, like the Gentile people, the whole world, every human being needs salvation, needs to have their sins forgiven, needs to be brought from death to life, needs to be born again by the water and the Spirit and be given power to become a child of God. It's important to underline this because there's voices in the church recently, I think I mentioned last week, a prominent bishop at a conference with Jewish leaders from around the world, rabbis and others, you know, made a statement, an authoritative statement, at least from his position, and it comes across as if this is the church's, Catholic Church's teaching, that the Catholic Church should not evangelize Jewish people, that Catholics should not do it, and said Christians shouldn't do it, and should not say that the Jewish people need Christ for their salvation. Well, I'm not sure where he gets that. I mean, I understand the whole history theologically of where people are going with this and what they're trying to do, but it contradicts Scripture completely and the whole tradition of the church. And some of our greatest saints who, who were very anointed, like Vincent Ferrer, who brought hundreds and thousands, maybe even, of Jewish people. In one series of homilies, he brought 50 rabbis, somewhere in, I think, 50 to 60 rabbis into the Catholic Church. Now, the Catholic Church respects and is humble, and whenever she proclaims the gospel or shares the gospel with somebody, like from a Jewish background, individuals who do that ought to propose their own understanding and propose the biblical understanding, that is, of the means of salvation, but never to impose it. Don't push it, don't be aggressive, just 
do it without getting a sense out in the context of the relationship you're in with that person, that there's some interest on their part or that they trust you enough in the relationship to be able to share it with them. I mean, those are the kind of things that are good to keep in mind and to be sensitive about. But it's very clear. Peter's proclaiming the best news a Jewish person could ever receive, just like the best news any person could ever receive, is about God's Son became one of us. He came to take away sin and deal with with death and give us the capacity, enable us to become children of God. And then the religious leaders were were talking, and they, they were amazed at Peter and John's boldness. Where did that boldness come from? It came from the Holy Spirit. That's a characteristic of the people of God. And if we're healthy, if we're alive in the Holy Spirit, if we're convinced and convicted and our faith is mature and we know who the Lord is and we're living with the Lord and living from love of God and love of neighbor by the guidance and power of the Holy Spirit, walking out the uh, Sermon on the Mount, living a lifestyle that Jesus called us to live, living with the Lord and his people, you're going to be bold. You're going to be confident, not arrogant, disrespectful, but you're going to have the boldness. You're going to have the boldness to speak the truth in love. The leader said, we perceive they were uneducated men. And they wondered, like, how is it that these uneducated men speak with such confidence and so much is happening around them? And then they even said at one point that, you know, yeah, we see that a notable sign was worked through you, something we cannot deny. So this is why it's important that in every generation, Christians, Catholics be open and having a healthy, expectant faith that the Lord wants to perform signs and wonders, to heal people, to give prophetic words that are fulfilled, to manifest his spiritual gifts in this time and place. It's the normal Christian life to have that happen and to, be, to have the presence of the kingdom that is the authority of Jesus and the very ways Jesus spoke, the very ways he ministered, the kinds of signs and wonders that he performed, to have those now uh, happening through the apostles, just like Jesus said it would, this is critical. Because you notice here now, all kinds of people, thousands of people came to believe because of the preaching. But what brought them to the preaching and what gave them confidence in the preaching was the sign and the wonder that was worked in the name of Jesus. That's why Peter said, pay attention to it. He didn't say, don't pay any attention to the sign. He said, here's the meaning of the sign. Here's what happened. And he interpreted it for them. And the church in every generation needs to have confidence to be able to proclaim that. And when the right time comes to be able to respond to the move of the Holy Spirit, to pray for people and let the Holy Spirit and have the conviction that it's even possible, you know, and have the faith and the hope that the promises of the Lord are indeed true. And so they were frustrated and angry with Peter. And they said, we told you to, Peter and John, do not do this again. And what did Peter say? Whether it is right in the sight of God to listen to you rather than God, you must judge. For we cannot but speak of what we have seen and heard. So the religious leaders of Israel who they're speaking to are saying, you need to stop speaking in the name of Jesus and no more signs and wonders, none of that stuff. And Peter said, well, you have to do what you have to do, but here's what we're, gonna, here's what we're telling you. We can't stop speaking about him because of what we've seen, what we've heard, it's the good news, and we're going to continue to do that. And he did it in a respectful way. They maybe didn't experience it that way, but Peter was bold. Hope you can join me again tomorrow. God bless. Each program of Fire on the Earth with Peter Herbeck can be downloaded at AveMariaRadio.net and RenewalMinistries.net. Fire on the Earth is a production of Ave Maria Radio. Friends, I'd like to offer you Ralph Martin's new booklet, Join the Resistance. In this booklet, Ralph gives us a tremendous vision how we can join St. Peter and the apostles who said, resist the devil and he will flee from you. To get this free booklet, you can call 1-800-282-4789. That's 1-800-282-4789. Or go to renewalministries.net backslash FOE or subscribe to our podcast.